to choose the intro. This is your chance to take over Pine Size for one night only. You're about to see three potential intros for the upcoming episode. All you need to do on your Pine Size keypads is choose your favorite. And that's the one we'll go with. Let's get started. There's a Gersa Lursa about this Hursa. Welcome to Pine Sized. <laughs> Welcome to Pine Sized. One kiss is all it takes. Falling in love with me. Gersa abilities. Let's all go to the Gersen Schenken. Three fantastic intros, I'm sure you'll agree. Now let's see which one was your favorite, and therefore which one will start the episode. Hmm. You motherfucker. Welcome to the show, thanks for stepping in. Now, I picked up these two crafty gurses, we'll get onto that in a second, from Waitrose for £1.35 a can. Oh, this is part of their collaboration series that the supermarket are running that I have seen nothing of, even though they said they launched it in September. Now, the pricing of these cans has been a bit divisive lately, because it seems as if Waitrose realised they had all this stock that wasn't flying, so they've put it out for what turns out to be cost plus VAT. And that's not good for the independent bottle shops or the brewers out there. Especially as one of my all-time favourite bottle shops in the world, Trafalgar Wines, ignore the name, in Brighton, shut down a few weeks ago. So it's quite hard hitting when people are talking about how, how dangerous this sort of thing can be to independent craft beer shops. Anyway, on to the beer. We haven't had a magic rock on the show, I think, since our cannibal run. And it's great to have these Huddersfield heroes back alongside one of my all-time favourite breweries here in the UK, the Wild Beer Co. Brewery. Brr. Wild Beer Company Brewery? These are two fruited gurses, which craft beer company have called the New England IPA of the sour world. These, they're leaking hype, quicker than the Raspberry Leaks juice when it's slightly overripe and you touch it, it explodes. Gerser is a top fermented style of German beer that has its origins near Leipzig in the city of Goslar. Gerser? Goslar? Goslar. They used to be wild fermented and basically use up stuff that Germans had lying around. The ill-fated Frankfurter Gerza never took off, but <laughs> it's given rise to these wonderful fruity styles. They are tart, herbal and refreshing, but their most defining characteristic is their saltiness, which derives from the water that ran through Goslar when the beer was being made. Gerza was delivered still actively fermenting in the cask to the Gersen Schenken, or Gerza Taverns. The casks were stored in the cellar with the tap bung closed, but the shave, shive, shivy, shive left open to allow some of the gas to escape. When the fermentation had slowed down enough so that no more yeast was escaping, the Gerza was ready to drink. They were bottled in quite an interesting manner. The barrel would be emptied into a giant tank, which then would be used to fill up these long necked bottles. Oh, get this little gross Gerza tidbit. The bottles weren't closed with a cap or a cork. Instead, a small piece of yeast would rise to the top of the narrow neck and plug it. Oh, that's gross, Gerza. There's a bunch of other beer styles that are part of this wider sour family. You've probably heard of them. We've got the Belgian Wit beers, Gerza's German Berliner Weisses, and the largely extinct German style, Brian and Gretze. Mmm, I do love that sweet, sweet taste of a Brian. Brian? Enough about Brian's, let's get these two Magic Rock and Wild Beer Co. Gersas into some glasses. And Gersa the glasses and the light and just glass them. So here we go, our collaboration from Wild Beer Co. and Magic Rock. A couple of Gersas, we've got Berry Kiss, a Berry and a Hibiscus Gersa, lightly sour, fruity and refreshing. And Rhubarb Kiss, Rhubarb Gosa, lightly sour, fruity and refreshing. Award-winning peer reviews. Both of these coming in at 5% with sediment, so pour carefully. We're gonna kick off with the Berry Kiss, the Berry and Hibiscus Gosa. If you live near a Waitrose, I'd get down as soon as possible and try and pick some of these up, because uh, that's a great price for craft beer. I mean, it's better than it going in the bin, right? Am I right or am I right? Or am I right? There we are, in the glass. Magic Rock and Wild Beer Co's Berry Blast, what the fuck is it called? Berry Kiss, Berry and Hibiscus Gerza, 
lovely, pur almost purpley, dark red color. Nice pink uh, head sticking around. That's a lovely little thing in that glass. A little bit of carbonation there, let's give it a whiff. Ooh, yeah, a little bit of lemon, very jammy. Mm, like a tart jam, or a jam tart. Maybe a little bit of kind of sherbet fizziness on there as well. Cheers. Oh, that's a winner. Mm. 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 Oh, that's jam. Fucking hell. Oh yeah. Oh, big, massive jam. Blueberry, blackberry, kind of a tart strawberry. Mm. Oh, there's a little bit of tartness, a little bit of sweetness, but it's this, it's the mouthfeel, a little bit of carbonation, and it's, it's the jam. It's the fucking jam. London's calling out of Just really mellow, really easy drinking. Wouldn't know it's 5%. Mellow is the word. Mellow is the absolute word for this one. Not too much of a salty bite. I think it's kind of disguised by that tartness, which fades to that sweetness, and it, you're just left with a jammy mouth. Little bit of tingling on the tongue. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna stop, because that's dangerous stuff. I'm not stopping. What the fuck is going on with my armor? Thank you very much for being my best friend. Thank you very much, thank you very, very, very much. Okay, and the other goza we've got here from Magic Rock is the Rhubarb Kiss Rhubarb Goza. Uh, five percent as well. <coughs> wow. Okay. Uh, we got dark yellow. Really hazy. Uh, wasn't expecting that. Decent amount of head. Finger and a half. Slightly off white. Tiny little bubbles. Not too much carbonation. Look at that haze. Haze for fucking days. Let's give it a smell. Oh yeah. Sharpy lemon. Not too much rhubarb. But yeah. Just, I mean, you can. I mean, I know you can't smell sharpness or tartness, but that smells sharp and tart. Mm, quite funky. There's kind of a biscuity on there. Oh yeah, funkybiscuit.com. Cheers. Oh, that's for, oh yeah. Mm -mm. Oh, that's a fun beer. Oh, that's fun. That's so fucking fun. Mm -mm. Okay, massive rhubarb. Where was that in the aroma? Rhubarb crumble sweetness. Really faded to tartness. It goes the other way around to the other one. A Little bit more saltiness on this one as well. The mouthfeel on this is amazing compared with the other one. So smooth. It's like you're taking a mouthful of rhubarb and custard. And you've already got the custard, but it tastes like rhubarb. Again, really mellow, chilled out, but it's, I think it's a, it's a much more fun drink. Lovely rhubarb dessert flavor, nice tartness to it, keeps you going back for more. You wouldn't know it's 5% again. Oh, that is fun. That is fucking great. Yeah, love that. So there you go, two brilliant gozas from a collaboration between two brilliant breweries. Shame about the less than brilliant supermarket stocking it for a less than brilliant price. But enough about that, it's all about the beer here on Pine Sides, and those are two stunners. Let me know if you managed to make it to Waitrose to pick these two up before they disappear, before they sell them for 10p. And uh, just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you like what you saw. And I'll see you all again on the Gerser. What would that even mean?